we take the position in our hospitals very, very seriously. Of course we do. Uh, but if you look at the figures yesterday, uh, we had about 80% uh, of our intensive care capacity occupied, and that is not unusual for this uh, time of year. But um, we're, not, we're not in any way complacent. We have always put health first uh, this year, and we'll continue uh, to do that. But health is about more than controlling the virus, Kay. If we go into a lockdown where we don't support people who are in the lowest paid professions, we'll have a mental health crisis on top of a pandemic, and that's the point that I've been making uh, in, in standing up for those people. Um, why do you feel that Westminster doesn't best understand the needs of the North? Because when I put it to the Minister, he said basically they're trying to save lives. Well, so were we. Um, and we've been working with them all year to do that. And um, I'm very proud of the council leaders here and everything uh, that our NHS has done. We've worked really, really hard uh, to do that. But as I said before, uh, life is about more than the virus and uh, I think Westminster sometimes struggles to understand that people can't pay two-thirds of their rent or um, uh, two-thirds of their bills. You know, it's, it's easier if you're on a, a middle income uh, salary, uh, you can cope with living on two-thirds of it for a while, but it's not possible to do that if you're the lowest paid. And that, let's just be really clear about this, Kay. Tier three lockdowns affect the lowest paid people in society. People who work in pubs, people who drive taxis, people who work on the doors in pubs. These are the people that Westminster politicians traditionally ignore. But we are not going to do that here. If you're going to impose a lockdown here, it's going to cause certain harm, certain harm to all of the people that I've, I've mentioned. And that is why we, we have, uh, have stood firm, because we don't believe we can consign our residents uh, to, to hardship in that way. What exactly has the government offered you or what and another another way of putting it what more do you want from the government well we got a letter last night um which was a bit provocative in that it was a, a late night ultimatum but i'm going to try and be positive this morning and look at look at the, the parts of the letter that you know give me some grounds for for hope and there was a reference in the letter to potential additional support so we've never had a figure for that what that might mean so it's a bit odd to be given a, an ultimatum when we don't think we've concluded those, those discussions. But I'm going to consult the Greater Manchester leaders this morning. And I, I would propose to those leaders that we write to the government this morning setting out what we think is a fair figure, given, Kay, that we here have been under restrictions for three months already, Tier 2 restrictions. I, I hear voices in London calling for support because they're in Tier 2 now. Well, I don't disagree with them, but bear in mind we've been in those restrictions since July. That's the first point. But the, the second point is we need full flexibility over that funding so we can support the people who we believe will need to be supported through everything a tier three lockdown will mean. OK, what, what figure are you looking at? Well, I, you know, it's not right, is it, to go into those negotiations. Those are for the discussions with the government. And, you know, we're trying to do this in the right way. We're I trying suppose, not to... I suppose, Mr Byrne, I'm sorry to interrupt, <coughs> but I like... suppose, Mr Mayor, that people will be saying, how come you're only having these last-minute negotiations now? Why didn't you give them a figure um, to start with that you wanted? Of course we've been sharing those, those figures, Kay, and those often are, are the subject of negotiations. But I've always said it's not about the size of the cheque. The question is, will we have enough to help the people who will be most harmed by this? Will we be able to help the businesses that are now close to collapse because of three months of restrictions? There are many businesses in hospitality in Greater Manchester that, that literally now are, are on the brink. And the question is, uh, you know, will we be able to help those businesses to survive? So that, that's the discussion that we've been having uh, with the government and, and we will continue to have. And as I say, we will respond in a positive way to this uh, to this letter. We will continue to seek an agreement, but an agreement which protects people, businesses and communities from the harm that a tier three lockdown will cause. Um, what will you do if, I mean, you've put your neck on the line on this one, Mr Mayor, what will you do if restrictions are imposed? Well, of course, uh, we, we wouldn't break the law. Um, we've never said that we that we would. Um, we would obviously um, have to uh, accept that decision. In the end, it's the government's prerogative. But I, I would say to them at this point, uh, are they sure that that is a wise thing to do? Because this isn't just Greater Manchester's uh, problem, is it? Because everywhere could end up in Tier 3 over, over the winter. 
And if they impose Tier 3 on places without providing that, that support, you know, put a punishing lockdown on places during the winter, it will be the, the poorest people that will, that will suffer the most as a result of that, uh, Kay. And I would say to them that the, you know, the government will be at risk of losing what public support remains for the approach that they're, that they're taking. And the other thing I would just add here is all of the experts, chief medical officer, chief scientific advisor, the deputy chief medical officer, every single one of them has said to us that they are not certain tier three will work. And the only way it's got a chance of working is if you fully fund it so that lots of things can close, so that they can have the maximum impact. But the, the problem with the government strategy is it isn't doing that. It's trying to, to penny pinch on tier three. And that's the problem. I don't think its own strategy will work. It's not backing itself to make its strategy uh, work. And I think people need to think seriously uh, about that. So it is about the size of the cheque then? Sorry? It is about the size of the cheque then? It's about the right level of support for people, uh, for people to survive, for businesses uh, to survive, and the flexibility for us to be able to, to help uh, people uh, through this. Uh, so, you know, that question implies that this is all about us, you know, trying to get money for councils or for our budgets. It's not about that. This is about people. Uh, and we are doing our best to protect them in very difficult uh, circumstances. As I say, of course, we take controlling the virus extremely seriously, but we also take people's welfare very seriously, particularly the welfare of people who have least. Uh, and that is what this is about. It's what it's always been about. And can I just remind all of your viewers this morning, Kay, that this isn't just me or this isn't just Labour politicians here. This unites us all across the split political spectrum in Greater Manchester. So, you know, I would just ask the government to, rem to remember that. Their own council leader, their own MPs uh, believe that Greater Manchester needs uh, a, better, uh, a better deal than the one that is, is being offered. You said in an interview the other day, I think, uh, Mr Mayor, that uh, you believed the problem with these negotiations was the Chancellor. Is that still the case? Well, I think something has changed, hasn't it? So earlier in the year, it was you know, the wartime chancellor, whatever it takes, we will help you all through this. And you couldn't fail to be impressed by that. I was impressed uh, by that. It was the right thing to do. We're in a crisis uh, and people need support in a crisis. But it does appear there's been a, an abrupt change uh, since the summer where it's the opposite uh, now. Um, we're trying to, to respond to a pandemic on the cheap. That's how it, how it feels. And it's particularly relevant, isn't it, when you then come to a regional lockdown, because by definition, these are going to be um, divisive. Um, and if you don't fully fund them, you are going to widen um, the, the divides in, in society. The danger for me of a, a, an underfunded regional lockdown is that it becomes uh, an act of levelling down from a government which said it would do the opposite. OK. Um, so just to be clear, just before I let you go, I know that uh, you've got a busy day ahead. What happens between now and midday? Are you expecting to have a chat with the Prime Minister on the phone? Mm. Are you going to be speaking to your colleagues? Uh, high noon comes, then what happens? Certainly speaking to my uh, colleagues, uh, Kay, that's the first thing that I, I will be doing. And let me just say again, I want to stress this, I will respond as constructively uh, and as positively as I can to the letter uh, that's been sent. Uh, it does talk of additional support, so let's talk about that, but it must come with that flexibility to help people, as I've been describing throughout this interview, people who are self-employed, people whose businesses are, you know, almost almost gone. So that's the, that's the issue, but it, it will be a constructive response. I, you know, we will probably write to the government at some point this morning, uh, setting out what we think is a fair resolution uh, of this issue. If the Prime Minister wants to ring me, of course I would always I would always speak uh, to him. You know, people will have to judge this situation, won't they, as to how it's been handled. But I am absolutely uh, certain in my mind that we have done the right thing. It, it is no light thing to put your area into a, into a lockdown when you've already been in three months of restrictions. That is not a light thing to do. You have to think really carefully before you do it. You have to consider the impact on the lowest paid within our, within our communities. And that is why we've taken the position that we have. And um, I, I am absolutely confident that we've done the right thing. And if you do enter Tier 3, will you consider your position? 
Well, I would always, I always consider what I've done and whether it was the, the right thing to have done. But I think I've just said to you, at, at no point do I think I've, I've acted in the wrong way here. People say posturing. Well, it, it isn't posturing to represent the people who have least in society. That, in my view, is what politics should be about and actually what politics has kind of forgotten about in, in recent times. Who, who in Wester speaks up for people driving taxis? Who down there speaks up for people working in pubs or in bookies? They, they don't, largely. So politics is, in the end of the day, about representation, giving people a voice. And I believe I've done that. Uh, it's up to other people here to judge whether I've done the right thing or the wrong thing. But uh, I am, uh, as I say, in my own mind, uh, I, I feel I've done what I, what I should do in the role that I hold.